LLCs are not right for everybody, but they can be super, super useful. So let's talk about some of the ways that LLCs can benefit you. But first, you need to understand one important detail that I did not get when I started my business. I thought that if I had an LLC and if I put money into it or earned money with it and then left the money there and didn't take it out, that I wouldn't have to pay taxes. That was so wrong. And I'm gonna explain why. But first, let's talk about what LLC stands for. LLC stands for Limited Liability Company. The whole point of an LLC is to protect you from liability. LLCs do not change your taxes. They don't change the way you're taxed. They don't change the amount of money that you have to pay to the government every year. They don't. They are only a container. Let me explain a little bit more. Let's say that one day you decided to start cleaning your neighbor's houses and you turned it into a business. You never set anything up officially. You just go over there and you clean their house, you get paid cash and you go home. Whether you like it or not, you're a business, but you have zero liability protection. So let's say you go over to your neighbor's house and you accidentally break something and it falls on top of a giant grand piano that's worth tens of thousands of dollars. And this homeowner gets pissed and they sue you. Well. They can sue you for everything you got, everything that's in your bank account, everything that your business is worth, your house, your retirement, your pension, because there is no layer of separation there. And so we use LLCs to protect ourselves from liability. Liability meaning getting sued. Let me give you another scenario. You decide to form an LLC before you start cleaning houses. And now you have Katie's Cleaning, which is an LLC. You go and clean houses, all that money gets deposited into your business bank account, and then the same thing happens. Well, guess what? They can only come after what is within your limited liability company. It protects you, it separates the business from yourself so that if your business makes a mistake, your personal assets are not up for grabs in the lawsuit. And that's why LLCs are special. So that's how LLCs work. They don't change your taxes, they simply protect you. Here's another thing about LLCs. When you form an LLC and you start doing business with it, let's say you open up a bank account, you get an EIN, an operating agreement, you have it all set up. Even if you earn money with your LLC, it still counts as you earning money. And that's because an LLC is an extension of yourself. It's not a separate thing. It doesn't file its own taxes. Somebody's got to pay taxes for the money that the LLC makes. And that somebody is whoever is getting the money from the LLC. If it's just you, then you're on the hook for the taxes. So keep that in mind. Leaving money in the LLC doesn't work. It's considered profit no matter what, no matter where it ends up. So you might as well transfer it to yourself first and spend it. I mean, it's not always a good idea, but for sake of discussion. So remember that LLCs don't change your taxes. They're an extension of yourself. You are your business and your business is you. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about some of the benefits and some of the nuances about LLCs because I know I'm gonna get these questions. Husband and wife. Do they need to be on the LLC together or can it be just one of them? Well, the IRS looks at husband and wife as one entity, as one person, as one tax filing. And that's if you're married and filing jointly. If you're separate, separated, or you don't file jointly, you'll both wanna be on the LLC. But if you're married and filed jointly, either one. Just double check and make sure that your state laws consider it to be community property like California. So look into that before, but most of the time, husband and wife don't have to be on the LLC together. Let's talk about partners. What do you do with partners? How do you form an LLC with more than one person? Well, typically when you would form an LLC by yourself, it would be considered manager managed or a single member LLC, which is totally fine. I've got a bunch of single member LLCs, but I also have member managed LLCs. And that's what you form when you have more than one person in an LLC. Let's say that myself, and my business partner, Steven, decide to start a, a tax planning agency, which we've done, by the way. What we've done is we formed an LLC together. It becomes a member managed LLC. And so when the money comes into the LLC, some of the profits go to each of us. So technically it's considered a partnership. It's an LLC that's taxed as a partnership. And so Steven will pay taxes on the money that he gets and I will pay taxes on the money that I get. And so when you form an LLC with more than one person, it automatically becomes taxed as a partnership. But how do LLCs become taxed when it's just one person? The answer is a sole proprietor as one person, as a single member. Sole proprietor taxation is the same as a single member. And I have more videos on that if you wanna see them. So we're not gonna to go too much further. Just wanted to touch on it for you. 
In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that LLCs aren't right for everybody, and that is 100% true. Not everybody needs to go form an LLC right away when they start a business. Sometimes it makes sense just to start out as a sole proprietor. What that means is just start doing business. Because when you start doing business activity, like if you just start making and selling hot dogs or t-shirts, you're in business in the eyes of the IRS. There's no like official way to go into business. You just start doing it. And it's all about how the money flows. So my recommendation is if you're just trying something out, just start it and see if it works. Keep the business money separate from the personal money at the bare minimum but you don't have to get an LLC right away. If it starts to take off and you get to a point where you're making $1,000 a month with this side hustle or this business, then you can go get an LLC. The reason I say form an LLC when you're making $1,000 a month is because remember, LLCs only protect you. They don't change your taxes. And when you're making $1,000 a month, you actually have something to protect. That's why I think that $1,000 a month is a great threshold for forming an LLC. But where do I form the LLC? That's a great question. You want to form the LLC in the state that you're actually doing business. Wherever your business address is, that's where you need to form the LLC. So if you have a physical location in California, you have to form an LLC in California. However, if you're a consulting company or you do like remote work and you don't have an official business address, just your home address, you could technically form an LLC in another state if you wanted to take advantage of another state's laws. But like I said before, it's not going to affect your taxes. You're going to pay taxes in the state that you live. So before you start adding complications to solve problems that don't exist, think about what will be the easiest and the most manageable for you. Trust me, I've made those mistakes before. They're not always necessary. If you want to form an LLC, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can get to INC file. They're the best place to form an LLC for sure. Lastly, let's talk about the most important thing for an LLC, and that's your operating agreement. LLCs need rules. We have to understand you know, what to do if our partners have a disagreement, or what to do if we die, or what to do if we sell the business, or what to do if we decide to bring on a partner, or they want to give us $10,000 for 10% of our company. How do we make those changes? It's all done in the operating agreement. The operating agreement is the rules for your LLC. You can make a simple one page operating agreement or you can have a 25 page operating agreement. It depends on how complicated you want to get, but it's you who set the rules for your LLC. So if you want to add someone to your company, let's say they gave you $10,000 for 10%, you would write into your operating agreement that they gave you $10,000 for 10% share of the company. They have 10% weighted decisions. If we ever have a disagreement, you know, we will strike three attempts at mediation in person before we go to any type of litigation or arbitration. There's all kinds of things that you can do. You can be as creative or as basic as you want to be. But an operating agreement is really important. And most people totally forget about it. Now, if you forget about the operating agreement, you're going to default to the state's operating agreement. And we do not want to do that because the state's operating agreements are not written in your favor and it won't help you in any way. So if you don't have an operating agreement or you don't have the ability to go online and get one made, go to my website and you can download it for free, vanitor.com and the coupon code is I don't want to pay you. If you check out using that code, you should be able to get it for free and then you can use it in your business. Feel free to share it with anybody you like because I just want people to have operating agreements for their LLCs. It's so important. Now, once you have an LLC, there are some benefits that a lot of people haven't considered. An LLC is like the base foundation layer that will allow your company to grow off of. If you're just a sole proprietor and you haven't formed an LLC yet, that's about as far as you can level up. But if you form an LLC, you're able to level up a lot further. Here's what I mean by that. LLCs can change the way that they are taxed to S corps. So you can still maintain your LLC, but once you start making $50,000 a year in profit, you can change the status of your LLC to S corp. So it becomes an LLC taxed as an S corp. By doing that, it allows you to start playing the game like a big business and big businesses pay less in taxes. There's a few hoops we got to jump through like payroll and bookkeeping and meeting minutes and things like that. But it's worth it because the tax savings are huge. It allows you to avoid self-employment tax, which is a killer. We're not going to get into that in this video, but if you're interested, you can watch this video right here.
Now, if you want to make changes to your LLC, all you have to do is update your operating agreement. It's really that simple. The state has made it very, very easy for you to change your company and change your business and change the way you do things. The most important thing, however, is how the money flows. Whose bank account is it ending up in? And are you paying taxes on the money that you've earned? That's really important. Now, last thing, let's talk about how to get rid of an LLC in case you made a mistake and you don't want it anymore. LLCs can be dissolved by filing articles of dissolution. Basically, you go to the state and you say, hey, I don't want this LLC anymore. Can you dissolve it and make it go away? And you file a piece of paper for five to $20 and they make the LLC go away. Now it no longer exists. Now it's your job to cancel your EIN, your employer identification number, and also close down your bank account, and everything else related to it. LLCs are super, super simple, and they are a great way for business owners to build a solid foundation, protect their assets, and eventually change their taxes. But remember, LLCs don't change your taxes. You are your LLC and your LLC is you. If you like the way that I teach, I have a business school where I have hundreds of students that are learning from me on how to start their businesses. Right now we have a coupon code, which is new habits. Type that in and you will get $500 off. I would love to have you. If you have any other questions, please drop a comment below or DM me on Instagram. I get back to everyone. Keep educating. Be good to future you.